Hi, everybody. Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2022 Topps Chrome Baseball Update Edition. Full 12-box break, break number two, and it's a random division break. No vet commons ship here, but everyone gets a random division in Major League Baseball. Big thanks to this group. Thank you. Happy New Year. Congrats to Michael and Martin for winning uh, those spots in that capstone break that we did, that filler break. Thanks to Sugarbean, Joe, Harry, Michael for getting your spots straight up. There are your divisions right here. Let's match you up with the division. Let's randomize your names and divs. Five and a one, six times. One, two, three, four, five, and a one. Sixth and final time, Joe down to Michael. Five and a one, six times for the divisions. One, two, three, four, five, and a one. Sixth and final time. After six, AL East down to AL Central. AL Centro. All right, Joe, AL East. Harry, NL West. Michael, AL West. Sugarbean, NL East. Martin, NL Central. Michael, AL Central. Let's sort by division. All right. Now, I'm going to pause the video. When we come back, we're going to see if there's any trades. Then we'll have this full case break. Stick around. BRB. All right. Welcome back, everybody. No deals were done here in this break, so the divisions remain the same here on Saturday the 7th, 2023. Already in, already in 23 and 23. Big thanks to this group for making it happen. Appreciate it. And let's dive in to this full case. Tops Chrome right here. All right, here we go. There's update series right here. And there's all the guys there. There's the pack configuration. Look for autographs and one of one super fractors. We're always looking for super fractors. I don't know if there's anything guaranteed per box, but let's, let's find out. You know, there'll be a lot of purple parallels from what I'm understanding. Select box, I don't think every box. Select box will also contain autographed cards from MLB rookies, numbered parallels, no vet common ship. Um, but all the important rookie cards will ship, so if you see me miss like a variation or something like that, don't worry about it, it will go to you. Good luck everybody. Um, well, I've been away. Happy New Year, everyone. I've been away on my winter break for, for a little bit longer than I usually I usually do. So what's been any baseball? We can, uh, we'll eventually talk about some other sports because it's such a long break. But we'll start with some baseball. Any crazy baseball news? Harry's Phillies getting uh, Greg Soto from the Tigers in a five-player deal. It's going to help out that bullpen. Um... Not sure if there's anything. Is there anything other? Anything else crazy going on here? I guess uh, the, not. The, this should be a surprise to anybody. But the Dodgers did end up releasing or designating Trevor Bauer for assignment. They had until uh, yesterday afternoon to add him to the 40 man. So we'll see if another team ends up picking picking him up. It's got to get get through uh, get through waivers. Um, I guess Mariner signing AJ Pollock. Giants ended up signing uh, Michael Conforto. Brewers signed Wade Miley. Diamondbacks re-signing Zach Davies. Cubs in agreement with Eric Cosmer. Oh, that's right. Philly's got Craig Kimbrell as well. If he bounces back, Craig Kimbrell maybe in non-high leverage situations that'll still be helpful for the Phillies. He's still pretty solid. Uh, White Sox sign Andrew Benintendi. 
Dominic Smith, a one-year deal with the Nationals. Oh yeah, Devers signed a longer, a long-term deal, right? All right, yeah. Oh no, he went with just a one-year deal. Sorry, one-year deal, so avoiding arbitration. Um, what else? Diamondback signing Longoria to a one-year deal. It's all these smaller little deals. I guess uh, I think Rex was talking about this a little bit earlier. I think that Carlos, Carlos Correa isn't officially signed yet, right? So he's still hanging out there. What's going to happen? So these are the purple parallels, not numbered, but they will, of course, ship. It's Willie McCovey, Chris Bryant purple. There's a Bobby Witt Jr., nice. Julio Rodriguez. And that's his rookie debut card. That's going to be for Seattle. That's uh, AL West, Michael. And Bobby Witt Jr., AL Central. That will be for Michael Losia as well. Jack Sawinski to 299. All right, so Chad Dow is saying that the All Star Game refractor is not numbered, but the regular refractors, they are numbered. And a purple Torkelson, nice. And that is for the AL Central, that'll be for Michael. And Sawinski, NL Central, that'll be for Martin. Sometimes those inserts can be numbered as well. All right, so that was uh, that was box one. Baseball news happening. I guess we're all just waiting for, I guess, Correa to be officially signed. And then, um, and then I guess we're just counting down the days to uh, spring training. Uh, I guess Brian Reynolds still could be on the trade market. Remember, he requested a trade. At some point. Are the Mets considering walking away from the Correa deal? So as of January 6th yesterday, this is according to MLB.com, the Mets have grown, quote, very frustrated in their negotiations with Correa, now considering walking away from the deal, reports SNY's Andy Martino, citing conversation with a source with direct knowledge of the team's thinking. That said, negotiations are ongoing. The deal is not dead yet, Martino notes. New York Mets and Correa reached an agreement on a 12-year, $315 million deal in December. The contract hasn't been financial, uh, fi finalized, reportedly due to uh, concerns about Correa's physical. The same reason the shortstop's deal with the Giants fell apart. New York Post reported Thursday that Correa's camp has, quote, renewed contact with at least another interested team or two beyond the Mets, one of them including the Twins. And we'll see how that plays out. I don't think the I think the Dodgers are already out on the Correa deal. I don't think they're not terribly interested in uh in bringing him here. The Dodgers are on the hook for a big chunk of Trevor Bauer's contract. I'm glad that that situation is finally behind the Dodgers now, but they are trying to stay under the luxury tax and. 
don't think they can really pull off any, or they're not willing to spend big loads of money. I think they're gonna count on the youngsters and see what emerges in the trade market. And then once that luxury tax scenario resets for them, a lot of free agents at the end of the 2023 season, probably Shohei Otani. I think the Dodgers might, might, uh, might really make a big move for someone like him. Otherwise, they're going to rely on guys like Ryan Pepio. And some other youngsters, see if that farm system can really, see if that farm system, you know, does what it should do. They've been highly touted. Now can they, does that translate into the major, major leagues? We'll see. Hey, and Frank, what's up? How do I feel about Walker Bueller? Love Walker Bueller. But we're going to have to see what he's going to look like. There's Julio again. We'll have to see how he looks after uh, he rehabs from Tommy John. But when healthy, he's great. I mean, and what, Tommy John is not the, I don't think is like the sort of, sort of the death sentence for a pitcher as it was like maybe decades ago. Although this is his second though. Yeah, hang on, you're right. Actually, <laughs> that just clicked in my head. I was like, wait a second. He got Tommy John when he was drafted. We got a Mackenzie Gore autograph. Nice. Nice rookie auto. NL West. Harry with the NL West. Fifty-seven out of one twenty-five. Yeah, second Tommy John, that's a, little, that's a little more concerning. But I feel like, I feel like, you know, he was at such an elite level, right? Or, or at least trending that way to an elite pitcher. You know, if he gets a second Tommy John and turns into a great middle of the rotation kind of guy, I'll take it. ESPN or the other guys kind of updated their uh, their rosters depth charts. Oh, we also have uh, what's our uh, what's everyone's interest in the World Baseball Classic? That's that's got to be starting soon, right? Now, Walker Buehler got the surgery that Henry Rowan Gardner did for the Cubs back in the 90s. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure he will. Although, if you think about it, though, Mike, I feel like that surgery really only lasted half a season. Maybe that's not the way, that's not the way Walker Buehler should go. Because if you remember, at, towards the end of, uh, of Rowan Gardner's career, his short-lived career, that only lasted for, like, half a season and then towards the end of the season or maybe the playoffs in a critical situation. Well, we all saw it on TV. During a critical situation, the, the, the elbow or shoulder ligament, the extra tightening loosened up very quickly. So, I mean, in a highlight, in a highlight that will last, that, that will be replayed on you know, sports center for, for decades to come. He had to underhand the ball to one of the most fearsome hitters 
in the American in the American League, National League. Who are they playing? Some guy in the Mets, maybe. So, hopefully that's the surgery. Walker Buehler did not do that surgery. How much one? How much does one box of this update cost? I don't know. Do we have any on our? I think on our Instagram channel we're selling personal box of these. 140 for a hobby box and 260 for a jumbo box. Oh no, I'm sorry. 110 for a Topps Chrome update. So relatively speaking, not a not a bad price point. I think just non-chrome update baseball is 140. Non-chrome update baseball is 260. And then chrome update hobby box, which is what we're doing right here, is 109.99, 110 a box. Not sure when World Baseball Classic is happening. It uh, looks like Pool A starts in March, March 8th. And we'll take a closer look at this next box I'm ripping open here. There's a Wander Franco. And a Joe Ryan Blue, 150 out of 199. Bobby Wood Jr. And a green, a Connor Pilkington, 52 out of 75 for Cleveland. NL, check that, AL Central. That will be for Michael. There's AJ Pollock just signed to Mariners. Bobby Witt Jr., AL Central. Bobby Wood Jr. Purple, AL Central, Michael Losey at Last Spot Mojo. Mm, yeah, hanging. Fr Frank says he has got a nice Walker Bueller card. He's trying to decide, sell or keep. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one. What does everyone think? My inclination is, you know. His value is probably at the lowest right now, so. I would wait for the comeback. You know? Because it's not gonna be too much different, right? If you sell, if you sell it now, what's the difference, difference between now and if he's you know, if that second Tommy John just derails his career entirely, the value now and the value then in that scenario would pretty much be the same, right? But there is a potential upside. If he bounces back, knocks out a Cy Young, you know, and more with his career, then that value goes back up.
do you, do you have any idea what, what that card would be valued at now? Is it a rookie card or? It's non-rookie. Yeah, maybe maybe you, if you need the money, maybe you move that now, but I don't know. Trouble is when people get injured with something like that, it's like out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. Hmm. Well, that's a good question. I'm not sure, but you could check our personal breaks website for that. I know we're, we don't have any for group breaks, but check in with Teddy. He's on Instagram Live right now. And check the uh, personal breaks website that I just dropped in the chat. You can check there, but I don't know off the top of my head. But yeah, like going back to Walker Bueller, you know, guys who get injured like that, like, you know, that you're not going to see for a while. Sometimes the hobby, a lot of times, is, is out of sight, out of mind, right? If the person's not present and making things happen, you know, then, then people aren't really looking for his stuff unless people are looking for buy low candidates. All right. Next ball. Ooh, nice purple Wander Franco. There we go. That's the kind of stuff we want to see. And a Jeremy Pena rookie card. AL West. Michael and the Wander Franco. Who's got the uh, AL East? That's Joe. Joe Simone. Nice. Lakers are up by two now on the uh, on the Kings. And it's going to be weird seeing him in a uh, Cardinals uniform. Oh, I think Brandon Marsh is going to be numbered. It's going to be weird seeing Trey Turner in a Phillies uniform, but he wanted to go back. To the East Coast, there's Brandon Marsh at 2.99, AL West, Michael Losia. I feel like they gave the Angels gave up on uh, Brandon Marsh a little early. Seemed to be pretty good for the Phillies, right? Phillies fans. When I mean, he was starting playoff games. There you go, Frank. I like I like that optimism. Yeah, uh, what's the what is the timeline there? Walker, when did he when did he get that surgery? It's usually a calendar year, right? Unless he's a fast rehabber. We might see him towards the. I guess what about uh, Dustin May? Dustin May went down in in May. Maybe even earlier, April. There he is. Started throwing bullpens again in 2022. Yeah, so I think that's around when he, when he really didn't start getting into games until had build up his arm. Really didn't get into until maybe second half of the season. So yeah, maybe towards the end of the season for Walker Bueller. Maybe he won't be stretched out for starters innings. Or at least proper starters innings. You know, five, six in a playoff game. But maybe be able to do like an opener. If he can be effective for a couple innings, I'll still take that. Or maybe in the back end of the rotation. Sam Banks, what's going on? Happy New Year. All right, next box. So no, no, no real interest in the World Baseball Classic. I feel like these are one of those things that you don't really get hyped for until games start playing. You're like, hey. I'm kind of getting in, getting into it now. But we got a bunch of countries and a bunch of different pools and a bunch of different places. Pool A is in Taiwan. Pool B and quarterfinals are in Japan. Pool C is in Phoenix. 
Pool D, quarters, semis, and championships are in Miami. Pool C's in Phoenix. Am I going to see World Baseball Classic games in Phoenix between March 11th and 15th? United States, Mexico, Colombia, Canada, and Great Britain are in that pool. That could be fun. That's a good way to, I'm, I'm sure, hmm, I haven't actually checked the, the list of upcoming releases. Tops has to have some sort of World Baseball Classic set, or maybe at least inserts. Sam Banks doesn't like it. The Cardinals have too many players in it. You don't want them to get hurt. Are our rosters official? I guess as of December of last year, this is a NBC Sports Chicago. I just Googled a random Google search here. NBC Chicago, NBC Sports Chicago, December 19th, 2022. As of then, the roster is up to 23 players uh, with Goldschmidt, Arenado, as a JT Real Muto, Phillies, Will Smith, Dodgers, Pete Alonzo, Mets, Goldie, Cardinals, Trevor Story, Red Sox, Arenado, Cardinals, Bobby Wood Jr., Royals, uh, Tim Anderson, White Sox, Trey Turner, Phillies, Mookie Betts, Dodgers, Cedric Mullins, Orioles, Kyle Schorber, Phillies, Mike Trout, Angels, Kyle Tucker, Astros, Merrill Kelly, Diamondback, Nestor Cortez, Yankees, Kyle Freeland, Rockies, Brady Singer, Royals, Adam Wainwright, Cardinals, Logan Webb, Giants, David Bednar, Pirates, Dylan Tate, Orioles, De uh, Devin Williams, Brewers, Clayton Kershaw, Dodgers. Managed by Mark DeRosa. With uh, Ken Griffey Jr. as hitting coach, not bad. Andy Pettit as pitching coach. Jerry Manuel, bench coach. Lou Collier at first. Dino Ebel at third. Uh, and Dave Rigetti is your bullpen coach. Wow, are they adding Wayno, Newt, Nicholas, and Edmund on that too? Oh, wow. Yeah, that's always, that's always a tricky thing when something like this rolls around. I see, I see. Newt. And Edmund can play for uh, one of the Asian teams. I see. Another Torkelson for the AL Central, Michael. I like the the uh, I think the ability to scout a little bit is pretty interesting. Oh, Lakers down by two, 52 seconds left. LeBron with the ball drives, layup and in. Wow. LeBron James turning back the clock. That was a that was a young man's move there. Ooh, and an autograph? J.P. Sears? Yes. Rookie autograph for the AL East, Joe. Not numbered, but a rookie autograph nonetheless. Oh my. Right, 
attention might be divert, diverted a little bit for the last few moments of this game. Oh, and one? Oh, Debon Spons fouls out. That's good, I'll take it. Ah, oh, I see, Sam. All right, Lakers up by one. I mean, not like super rah rah, but I don't know. When the, when, when, it does bring it out of me when like when national sports are being played, but it's hard to gear up for like the World Baseball Classic, World Cup. Well, that's a different thing. Defense, come on, guys. Defense, good defense being played. Five, four. The three point. Oh, you gotta get those. That's out of bounds. That's Lakers ball. Got a three pointer that clanged off the back of the rim by the Kings. Lakers a little undersized, especially that AD. Unable to get a rebound. But where did that go? Is that off a Laker? Or is that off a Sacramento King? Looks like. Oh, wow, it looks like it might be Kings ball there. Your Luffer Yachty runs deep. Fair enough. Yeah, but I guess uh, I guess when it comes to the World Baseball Classic, it's not like there's a deep tradition beyond the World Baseball Classic, like the World Cup, but. But yeah, I don't want anyone to get hurt. All right, next box. But it's a good time to good time to kind of scout out some uh, if you're into that sort of thing. It's good to kind of scout maybe future talent. I think uh, Otani may may have had to been in a World Baseball Classic. I want to say. People saw an early look at him and his his potential abilities. It's Tyler Naquin Blue, 150 out of 199. You Darvish, maybe you Darvish had to have been in a World Baseball Classic. I think you able to spot some some talent there. Oh wow, did the Lakers steal it? And possession? Is Bauer going to play? I wonder. I suppose he could ask. Like, who may... I, I'm assuming... I mean, I'm assuming it's... Uh, people are asked or they, re, or they request and then manager says yes or no, I suppose. Is that how it works? There's a purple Bobby Wood Jr. Michael Losia, AL Central. Remember these all-star game refractors not numbered. Got a Torkelson. All right, 
gang. That was the first half of the case. Second half coming up. Got another 30 or so minutes to go. Let's see how my Lakers, yeah, Lakers ball. They're gonna inbound it. Inbound, back to Westbrook. You're gonna take the foul? No, I'm not gonna take the foul. He's gonna dunk it. He's gonna get two points. He's looking for the N1 as well. Might have had it. One of the Kingsbury's did kind of touch his waist. Maybe not grab the waist, but like a two-hand touch in football. Two-hand touch football. And Westbrook wants that N1 because they've left 18.9 on the clock. Oh, he does get it. So now he's got to make this. All right. Doesn't get that one. I gotta get this one, Russ. Two tie, two will tie. Well, right now, two will win it. Sinks the second one. So Lakers up by two. 18 seconds left. Clock running. Clock running. Clock running. Half court defense. Defend the three, boys. Two will tie. Turn around. Jumper Kings sinks it. Tied at 134, but 6.8 seconds left. And yeah, call the timeout, bring it up to the half court. All right. So De'Aaron Fox with a turnaround jumper at the elbow. 6.8 left, game tied 134. Lakers take their final timeout. Kings have a timeout. Decent defense by Dennis Schroeder, but here in Fox, just too crafty, just too clever. Six point eight left. They're not going to commercial. Nice purple Julio Rodriguez. AL West, Michael Losia. That's the spot that he won in the filler. Oops, I say a Zuzuki purple. NL Central, Martin. The spot that he won. Uh, hang on a second, folks. Lakers inbound, 6.8 seconds. Westbrook inbounding. What, LeBron, Schroeder, Nunn, Beverly on the floor? Westbrook in to Schroeder in the backcourt. Schroeder in the front court Drives, floats it up to the rim. And what? What happened? I don't have the volume on. Is that a foul on Dennis Schroeder? He's got two with two seconds left. Shooting foul? Well, they're all going to be shooting at this point. They're in the bonus. What's the contact? We have an autograph coming. Ooh, nice auto. Rookie auto, Stephen Kwan. If Julio Rodriguez didn't exist, I feel like Stephen Kwan might have had a shot at AL Rookie of the Year. There he is. That's going to go to the AL Central. Going to be for Michael Losia. There you go, Michael. Northern California kid.
another box. I think they challenge for a foul and it's successful. We're not successful. It is successful. Shooter's at the line. We put some time back on the clock. 3.6 seconds. These are huge, Dennis. Gotta nail these two and then play defense like hell. Sinks the first one. Might pick up by one. Lakers have been doing surprisingly well since Anthony Davis has gone down. I think they've maybe a, maybe a couple games over 500. I did not expect that. That other key guy is injured too. And sinks the second one. No timeouts. The Kings. They got to inbound that. All right, Lakers playing a full court press. They get it in, full court press, logo shot, off the back of the rim, Lakers win by two. Good job, Lakers. People are hugging, people are happy. All right, next box. Baseball around the corner, ladies and gentlemen. Bobby Witt Jr. NFL season going to be done. What by tomorrow? Do we have Do we have Monday Night Football tomorrow or uh, in two days? No, right. Everything Everything's done on Sunday. I want to say. So football, sort of depressingly, is coming to an end while. Once one sport nearing the end, another sport about to start. Yeah, that's it. Sunday, all the all the remaining games are all day Sunday. But there is a Sunday night game. There's a uh, Philly here. There's Simon Muziotti, seventy out of two fifty. Nice looking aqua parallel for the AL East, Joe. Well, there's. I feel like I there was a couple base cards of O'Neill Cruz, but which obviously will ship Martin, but nothing, nothing like a purple parallel, which is exclusive to this set. Nothing numbered. You know, which is what we want to see. We want to fry the, those big fish. But there's still a lot of boxes left. There's a purple Jeremy Pena. And that's for the AL West, Michael. All right, four boxes to go. Yeah, let's play to the whistle. Let's see what's let's see what happens there. Now, anyone know off the top of their head the uh, the NFL playoff implications? What's going on? I feel like it's very complicated. <laughs> Down to the wire, very complicated. There could be a ton of scenarios. So there'll be some seeding issues. I suppose we're still up to see who's going to be. So 
I think these are all, yeah, I guess maybe seeding is where a lot of clinched scenarios here. But in the AFC, there are three teams still up in the air. I guess Patriots are currently sitting in that seventh spot, that seven seed spot. But Miami's on the outside looking in. Steelers on the outside looking in. Miami has the tiebreak over Pittsburgh. Patriots have the tiebreak over Pittsburgh. And they have the tiebreak over Miami. So basically those two, Miami and the Steelers, want to see a loss from the Patriots, which is possible because because the Bills are playing the Patriots, I want to say. So Miami win, Steelers win, Patriots lose. Miami and Steelers with the Miami would have the tiebreak over the Steelers. Steelers need, I guess, a Patriots loss and a Dolphins loss. That could sneak them into the playoffs. And the Steelers are playing. They're hosting Cleveland. And the NFC is the NFC spoken for. I suppose uh, the number one seed for the Eagles still, still in play. That's not locked up. And then we got Seahawks, Lions, and Packers, all three at eight and eight. We're going to get in. Brian, hello. How's it going? Happy New Year. And the Seahawks. Oh, so Detroit at Green Bay. That's a that's a Sunday night football. That looks like a win and in situation. Where is the Seahawks under? Rams at Seattle. Seattle should be able to win that one. Who's that? Who's that third team that was hanging around there? No, oh, yeah, Seattle Lions Packers. That's it. It could be uh, could be an in interesting uh, some interesting games to watch. Ooh, that's interesting because it's a printing plate. That's Cooper Hummel. One of one printing plate. This is my first train whistle of the new year, and you are here to witness it. Congrats to the A N L West, Harry. Diamondbacks. NL West. Harry. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo -woo. There you go. First one for me for the new year. And a purple Bobby Witt Jr. And a purple Jeremy Pena. Jeremy Pena, AL West, Michael. Michael also has the AL Central, gets that purple Bobby Witt Jr. You want to see zero sophomore slumps for these big names. Zero sophomore slumps. Stay healthy, zero sophomore slumps. There's a purple Say Suzuki for the NL Central for Martin. Yeah, Martin, we've seen a couple of these MLB debut O'Neill cruises, but nothing significant beyond that. We want we want to fry that bigger fish. Let's see let's see what we can do. It's on the break schedule. Yeah, we will be doing it tonight. That's on the sketch, and that'll probably bring us to. To the end of the evening, actually. Got a purple Julio Rodriguez, AL West, Michael Losia. Stephen Punk, what's going on? Stephen Punk's always game to give me a prediction. Houston wins tomorrow. Bears lose. Bears get the number one pick. Wow.
who does Houston have to beat for that scenario to happen? They're at Indianapolis. That, that's possible. Where are the Bears playing tomorrow? Bears could probably Bears could lose a game, right? They could lose to Minnesota. That's possible. And number one overall pick. First off, here's a rookie auto, Ethan Roberts. NL Central Cubs, Martin. Oh, but Fields isn't playing, I see. Yeah, so that's it's even easier for them to lose. Texas could, could win that game. And then the Bears... We'll just pick, uh, we'll, we'll, the easiest thing for the Bears to do is get an offensive, uh, offensive line. Oh no, Stephen Punk says Bryce Young? No, I don't think so. I think, I think, I feel like Justin Fields has, has shown enough to be to be worth building around. Like, you gotta... You think they're... While well, Brian's saying quarterback, too. C.J. Strude? Strude? Stroud? Huh. Maybe, they, maybe Justin Fields hasn't. I thought you'd just go with a boring, like, left tackle or something like that. Someone could be there for, like, 10 years and... Get some Pro Bowls and all pros. I mean, Fields is being able, able to do a lot with with not a lot of weapons to throw to. A offensive line that isn't that great. I mean, if you get Bryce Young or CJ Shrewd, that's like that's the same problem, right? It's still gonna be the same offensive line and the same lack of weapons, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, basically, you're just starting that process all over again. It'll be the same thing. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Bears don't have don't have uh, pass catchers, enough playmakers, enough of an offensive line to really do to really do too much. So you're starting at square one again. Although Raiders are looking for a quarterback, I feel like the Raiders could use a, a young mobile quarterback like Justin Fields. And he'll have uh, he'll have an opportunity to throw to Devontae Adams and Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro and hand the ball off to Josh Jacobs and Raiders can just improve the offensive line and the defense and that's that. Wow, there's a purple O'Neill Cruz. There we go. That's the stuff we want to see. That's for Martin in the NL Central with the spot that he won in the filler. If Derek Carr gets traded, Devontae Adams goes to anything? I mean, I don't know. Uh, Steven, if, if you're getting paid, if you're the one of the highest played, paid workers at your work and your best friend gets traded, or fired, I guess, in, in a real world situation. Are you are you gonna be like, I will dump my in in solidarity with my friend that I work together with and work together very well with, but in solidarity I'm gonna quit too. 
give up this nice little salary. And then see what happens on the open market. I guess you'd probably still get the same amount of money. I don't know, you, but you have to go to new work, go to move to a new city, you know, figure out a new, new set of friends, coworkers, all that sort of stuff. Seems like a little bit of a hassle. Ooh, and an autograph, we got Danny Young. Rookie autograph for the Mariners, AL West, Michael Losia. I mean, in all honesty, if Devontae Adams does want to leave, well, you tell me, Chad. You're the Mariners guy. Who is Danny Young? You don't know who Danny Young is? Danny Young from Boca Raton, Florida? A lefty? Lefty pitcher? Drafted by the Blue Jays eighth overall in 2015? Danny's road to Seattle included stints in the Toronto and Cleveland organization, signed by the Mariners as a minor league free agent in February 2022. The former U of Florida, South Paul, was called up after logging six straight scoreless appearances at AAA. Young tossed two and a third shutout frames against the Phillies in his May 9th debut, whiffing three. There you go. Now you know who he is. And a purple Spencer Torkelson. Is Derek Carr gone? I mean, that, all indications seem seem to point to that. Otherwise, I mean, when he was, when they benched him, essentially, there were still, what, two games left and still percentage points, you know, possibility that could make the playoffs. And, you know, you would argue that Derek Carr would give your team the best chance to win. Your QB won, but they decided against it. So, and he was, I guess they agreed to that he goes home and not be at the facility. You know, all the capologist people are saying that, you know, if you if you release Derek Carr before X date on the calendar, then the cap hit is much smaller, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you get all those scenarios. Uh, all signs seem to be not, I don't know if it's fair. I don't think it's Derek Carr's fault that the season went like this, but but I think he will be the, uh, the scapegoat. <laughs> yeah, well, there are a lot of games with a lot of brutal, uh, brutal losses for the Raiders. That was just a new way to do it. What was the other game after that? Two weeks after that. But yeah, I mean I think I think they're gonna use this as a, use this as a as a hey we're gonna part ways with Derek Carr. They'll try to get old man Brady in, I guess, or they'll try to trade for Aaron Rodgers or maybe try to sign Lamar Jackson in free agency, although I don't think Lamar Jackson's will probably end up with the Ravens anyway. Um, I mean, depending on where they end up in the draft, maybe they'll, maybe they'll draft a QB, but I mean, they've got so much work to do that, I don't know why get a young QB with a bad offensive line. Although, I mean, he'd be in a good system, he'd be in a good, uh, he'd have a lot of weapons around him to throw to, but Raiders got to shore up that offensive line. And, um... And really improve that defense. That defense is, is, is a killer. Too many big plays. Unable to pressure the quarterback. Offensive line is a huge thing. Although it's decent at times, but it's just depth is an issue too. Once like one person gets injured, then it's, the whole thing falls apart. The fact that the Raiders haven't been drafting very well over the, like the last five or ten years kind of shows the lack of depth that they really have. Yeah, it's even a lot. A lot of Raiders fans arguing that 
that uh, that maybe you know his Al Davis' son Mark Davis should sell the team and you know get a get a big hedge fund billionaire owner to come in and and really really build out the the infrastructure there. I think Tom, yeah, Tom Brady's probably staying in Tampa for another year or so, right? Lamar? I would take Lamar. I, I would sign Lamar Jackson. I mean, maybe... There's Muziotti again, 33 out of 50 for the Phillies and all East. Sugar Bean, the NL East. I don't know. We'll see. Raiders, very important offseason for the Raiders. It starts, I mean, starts with the quarterback, right? So that'll be one of the big decisions for the Raiders. Start with a QB. Because if that QB isn't correctly identified, it doesn't even have to be a big name, it just has to fit the team. All right, doesn't have to be a big name. Just fit the team. Yeah, well, I, th I think Jimmy G's a free agent, right? And Garoppolo has, has played under the... Uh, has played under the Josh McDaniel system before. So he's familiar with that offense. I mean, I wouldn't mind taking a crack at Jimmy G on a short-term deal, especially with all those weapons around him, and then just, just reinforce the offensive line in, in the draft and free agency and reinforce, you know, reinforce the defense in the draft and free agency. And then same thing again the following year. Reinforce defense, reinforce offensive line through draft and free agency. All right, final box. Now you got it, and the Raiders have to think about what do you do with Josh Jacobs? Now I don't know what what camp you guys are in, but you know it's kind of hard to. There's a mountain of evidence that says, you know, running backs that get that big second year contract. More often than not, it's not doesn't work out for every what Derrick Henry. There's look at that Ezekiel Elliott contract. Look at the maybe go back a few number of years. Look at the Demarco Murray contract. But yeah, I mean the Raiders might have been stuck. And they might have to be like, well, <laughs> we can't let this guy go. He's he's been playing through injury. He's been so gritty. He's been so he's a great personality. You know, he's really come out of his shell. He's really more more vocal as a leader. So as much as I don't like it, you might have to give him that money. Steve saying, what's up with the top chrome with the Paul Goldschmidt? Card buyback thing? I don't know. Something that Tops is doing? Or are these old, like old Goldsmith cards? Oh yeah, I think there was something, right? I think it was maybe in, in hobby shop only kind of deal where if you bring a particular Goldschmidt or Aaron Judge card, like the MVPs, they'll like buy them back from you somehow. Maybe get credit from your, your local card shop or something like that. Last box. And then I don't know, they're gonna use them for a future buyback or something like that? Not sure what they're planning on.
But I thought it was interesting. I think it was something to, to get people into some people to get people into shops and have them buying boxes in the store. So I think it, I think we have seen some people actually do that in our shop. Ooh. Autograph? It is it's Richie Palacios. Rookie auto for the AL Central. That's for Michael Losia, an autograph in the final box. Well, folks, we're getting towards the end. I'll do a, do a little recap of some of the cards that we, we got here, but thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. Good to be back. Happy New Year. Oh, purple Julio Rodriguez. And stick with us. I mean, we had a great 2022. Stick with us throughout 2023. We'll break all the new product. We'll go through a, you know, a number of sports seasons together. We'll be talking baseball, breaking baseball. All of that will be on jazbeescasebreaks.com. We love doing this. We love talking sports. We, you know, we even meander around some other, you know, pop culture -y topics as well, especially during these longer breaks like this or during downtime in the stream and our live streams. So always join us for that. We're always goofing around doing things, We're trying to have a, you know, just having a little fun. All wrapped up in a nice family-friendly show, at least we try to be most of the time. All right, so here's some of the highlights, some autos, some colors, some silvers. Got a printing plate, my first train whistle of 2023. Stephen Kwan, a lot of nice stuff. Wander Franco's, got that Mackenzie Gore too, that was pretty nice, to 125. And a purple porcelain back there. There you go, gang. I'm Joe. I'll see you next time in the next video, jazbeescasebreaks.com. Bye-bye.